I'm Christine Bryden and uh, I was diagnosed with dementia um, and I was only 46 at the time, it was a huge shock um, and I did find that there was nothing for people there, nothing to help us with dementia and we were just regarded as mindless empty shells. So I felt really compelled to write something to talk about it, to share what it feels like. So I wrote my first book, Who Will I Be When I Die? Because it really, title really expresses my fear, you know, my loss of identity during this illness. And it's been an interesting journey along which I've met Paul, my current, my husband, who I'm now here at the publishers, Jessica Kingsley. And he, I wouldn't be here without him because he just helps me every step of the way. Um, he's a great enabler to get me doing things and get me doing, doing things. And I talk about meeting him in my second book, uh, which is called Dancing with Dementia, because dementia for Paul and I is like a dance. The music changes, the dementia music, which is, you know, I'm going downhill, something else is more difficult, and we have to adjust what we do. All those people out there who can no longer speak, who can't tell you what it feels like, or who are too scared to say they've got dementia, we need to really get on a whole drive here to get more of us speaking out. It's important to say what it feels like so that you'll know what you can do to help us. Well, if I say words wrong, or even say, seem to say hurtful things, please remember I'm just muddled in the head and I might get words very jumbled, very scrambled, but it's still me trying to communicate with you. Um, I find it really hard to say what I mean. I might say hurtful things, um, but I really want people to stay in touch with the real me inside. And that's often done best by people just looking me in the eye, listening, like Paul does, to the sort of muddle that I come out with, ungrammatical, might seem hurtful, but he still listens and communicates back with me. And I think it's really important to stay um, in communication with us as human being to human being, because we are still human beings with a spirit. And it's spirit to spirit, we can really stay in touch. And then another thing is that, is my memory. I mean, it's really shot to pieces. And even if I can't remember this morning, or I can't remember you came around yesterday to visit me or whatever. Can't remember your name, even though you might be my daughter and I can't remember which one. Thank goodness my pets don't really mind what name I call them. Um, if I can't remember, it doesn't mean it's not important for me. It just, it, and I really, really enjoyed that time that we might have had together. It's just that I can't remember it. What I rely on with Paul is that he creates a word picture of what he remembers of an event. And then with that word picture, I can walk into it and begin to share it with him. And I'm sort of walking into his memories. But then there are glimpses of my own memories that I can then reconstruct. So I really want people to um, just talk until I start having a bit of light in my eyes and start remembering things. Sometimes that light doesn't happen because I really just can't get the memory, but at least just share it with me so that I'll at least know it's important to you. And finally, what really, really I find difficult is that I might look normal, I might sound okay, but that's because I'm trying really, really hard to be normal. Um, and I was really super fast and all of that in the past, so anybody who knew me back then knows I've really, really changed. But so often people say to me, and I really hope people stop doing this one day, ah, oh, that always happens to me. Oh, I always can't remember where my keys are or where I've parked my car. Oh yeah, I can't remember a word sometimes or what have you. And I think they think they're trying to make me feel better. But if I had cancer, 
and I said I was struggling with, I don't know, a tumour in my stomach or something. Surely you would not say to me, oh yes, I always have something like that. I always feel really st in the hurting in the stomach, and I'm, you know. It's like that. I'm no longer like I used to be. So you really have to treat me as if I've got a terminal illness, which I do, and to empathise, not try and say, oh, that always happens to me, because that writes me off. And that's just demeaning, and I find that really, really hurtful. And it always happens. I just hope one day it will stop.